Hey, how's everyone doing? This is Oz with Oz Mechanics, and on today's video, we have this 2008 Mitsubishi Raider. So the customer complaint is that he was at a drive-thru, and as soon as he was getting out of the drive-thru, he noticed that the vehicle is bogging down. So he brought it straight here to the shop, and what we're going to do today, we're going to check it out, and we're going to fix it up on today's video. <laughs> So first and foremost, what we're going to do, we're actually going to read the codes. So I'm going to get on my scan tool and let's check this out. So we have a PO300, PO301, PO300 again, PO301. So we got some pending codes and some confirmed codes right here. So essentially we only have two codes right now. All right, I do know that this vehicle did get a tune up beforehand and he told me he had an oil change as well. Uh, but one funny thing is when I was trying to crank this vehicle over, it did not sound well. It kind of, sorry about that glare. It kind of had uh, kind of like a little hiccup to it. So let's do that. About So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the gas pedal all the way down. Make sure that you have clear flood mode on your vehicle. And then we're going to crank the engine over. And let's see if you can hear it. It doesn't sound consistent so right now what I want to do I actually want to go outside and we're gonna do a relative compression test with our amp clamp and we're gonna hook it up and we're gonna see if we have a dead cylinder okay so I got my scope out right here and for this we're gonna need two channels because I'm gonna hook, hook up my amp clamp to the battery cable just to get the relative compression coming out from the the actual starter and as well we're going to have one hooked up to our primary primary side of the ignition coil so what we're going to do right here we're going to use my uh, amp clamp we can see this so right here it we're going to put it at the six, uh, 60 amp scale it says for every 10 millivolts is going to equal one amp so let's just say 100 millivolts is going to equal up to 10 amps so a thousand millivolts that's basically one volt is going to equal to 100 amps so i'm going to set this up to we can say five volt scale 10 volt scale you know somewhere right there so what we're going to do with this one i'm going to hook it up on the battery positive and i'm probably going to go ahead and hook it up to the one going to the actual starter and then after this i'm going to hook up my second channel and that's going to be hooked up over here where we have our primary side so we want we want it hooked up to the control wire so let me show you how that looks so this is our ignition coil number one so we're going to have one wire that's going to be positive battery positive and the other side is going to be the control wire Okay, that, now that we have it hooked up, right now the only thing I have hooked up is my, let me see, num channel number one will be my amp clamp. So like I said, I'm going to bring this down to, let's just do 10 volts. I think that should be okay. And then our uh, ignition side, I want to do at least 100 volts. So, and I think we should be okay now. So like I said, on the first trace, that's going to be the yellow wire. We should see a little bump right here, and that's going to be our relative compression. And then our green trace, that's going to be the trigger coming out from the, the actual ignition coil. So that's going to be our primary side. So let me crank up this engine and see what we get. We're going to pause it. Let's zoom out. So we can see where our crank was at. All right, so let's grab our stylus right here. Let's zoom in just a tiny bit. Okay, so if you can see these little bumps right here, nice bumps. And then we have this big old bump right here coming up. But look where our trigger's at. So we have trigger there, trigger here, trigger there, trigger there. Cool. As you can see, 
we don't have a little bump coming up right here so I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a mechanical issue um, and like I said I was kind of researching this before I even got close to this job and I wanted to see what uh, other technicians have dealt with this and, and so on so we can see right here so if we can count these here's one bump one two three four five and this is where six should be at because this is six under one two three four five and if, what I'm going to do right now, I'm actually going to fast forward. I'm going to take off the valve cover and we're going to see if we have a, you know, rocker that's messed up or so on. And hopefully we can get this, you know, out the way. So let me get right to it. Okay, so as you can see, the valve cover, I kind of slightly took it off because I still have to take off the brake booster and all this good stuff to get this out the way I just wanted to get to cylinder number one to confirm the issue and I don't know if you can see that right there but look at the valve spring you see how the good one looks it's right there right behind there and this is the collapsed one so yeah brand new valve spring is gonna fix up this issue and there you go uh, I gotta call the customer, see what they say. So I'm just gonna wait on this. So if you do like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to hit the uh, little notification bell to get all the brand new videos coming out from Moz Mechanics. Sorry I couldn't show everything. I'm gonna see what the customer says. Y'all have a nice day. Goodbye.